We begin our story with our adventures gathering outside the Grand Hall of Princess Pashley, awaiting for them to be granted an audience. All right, listen up, chuckle fucks. Princess Pashley has requested an audience with the, uh, likes of you all. Follow me this way and stay close. Whoa, 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 too close. Too close. Please. Um, uh, this is the first time y'all see each other. Uh, please introduce yourselves. Well met. I'm a scholar from Miskatonic University. I've delved into the darkest of dungeons, seeking out that which has been lost in the abyss. Explaining the unexplainable, crafting the finest stories, and battling eldritch monsters who seek to plunge our world into madness and despair. But you can just call me Matt, or Matt Man if you want. I am Shadowwolf, shape-shifting druid. I stalk the forest in search of new forms to take. Why? <laughs> because we can only truly understand others by walking a mile as them. I like Matman, pass on my stories of those creatures for all to enjoy. Uh, hi. I'm the great bard Ravenmane. <laughs> Perhaps you've heard of me. I may have won an award along the way. I am able to soothe the mightiest of beasts with a simple lyric or win over the suspicious with a simple sentence. Here, let me show you. No, no, no. Just no. 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 Five bucks says Raven Main will try and seduce something by the end of this campaign. You're wrong. All right, let's sign the contract. Ha ha ha! That was very funny, Matt Man! Oh, you know what else is going to be very, very funny? In our first combat encounter, I'm going to look your direction and I'm going to think, wow, Matt Man could really use a bardic inspiration right now. But then I'm going to remember the funny little joke and I'm going to give it to that guy instead. Who are you again? <clears throat> I am the apprentice cleric Burnham. Although I am new to the craft, I am learning the ways of the cleric. Do not worry about my title, I may be new, but I am skilled in the arts and I wield my trusty mason Hi, shield. hello, Ravenmane, award-winning bard here. Nice to meet you. Uh, listen, I don't know how to tell you this, given that you're an apprentice <laughs> cleric and all that, but I'm going to be very busy being on polymorph and banishment and counterspell duty, so healing is really going to fall all up to you, and, uh, no pressure. You know if we fail, it's the healer's fault, right? What? So I should have prepared some healing spells, I guess? The guard approaches the party and leads you into the Grand Hall. Settle down, you pathetic meatbags. I am here to escort you to the Grand Hall, as requested by Her Highness, Princess Pashley. Now, come with me. And no, I will not say please, as that would convey kindness, which would result in me lowering my manly facade by showing weakness. And I am not weak! Pay attention, nerds. I have unfortunately been tasked with escorting you to the grand hall i suggest that you follow me this way before i do something drastic and by that i mean murder you all in front of your families welcome adventurers i have summoned you all to investigate the disturbances in the western side of my kingdom rumor is there's a great evil rising I need you to find the source and deal with it as you see fit. Many hours later... The party approaches the lair, not knowing what to expect next. <sighs> Who dares enter my dungeon of prodigious propofil? Yes, hi, Ravenmane, award-winning bard, surely you've heard of me. I'd like to roll for seduction. If she fails in her seduction, I would like to roll to make sure that I can use my beast form to destroy the man that's in front of us right now. I hope someone picks up that phone. Cause I called it. It was too obvious. Where am I even gonna get that much money? <sighs> yeah, Zamudi, don't you need to start the show soon? Oh crap! I forgot about the intro! Don't worry about it. We can help. Not a problem. We've got you covered. Coming in from all over the world. A podcast by voice actors for voice actors. This is Cold Read. 
this podcast is designed to help them. But to help you, the listener, they're not claiming to be experts. But by them sharing their experience and talking to each other, they hope you'll be more prepared to start your journey in voice acting. With your host, Renara Hawk. Words are not working, but I know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I hope it came across. There we go. <laughs> You're fine. Princess Pashley. Hey, Zamudi. Do you think I'm made of money? Elderino. Now, there was one that I came across that had something to do with Five Nights at Freddy's, and the main role was being offered at an $8 million payout. <laughs> and I was like, what? And Zamudi. Oh, I'm hit. Target located. Uh, ah, ah. And now, let's, let's roll, roll take. tape. Enjoy. Oh my gosh. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Just... Whether you're watching us live or you're watching us um, <laughs> uh, on YouTube or anywhere that you can find podcasts, welcome to Cold Read, a voice actor podcast. Uh, that was about the most technically difficult intro I have ever made. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Yeah, just wipe the sweat off your brow there. You, you, were, you were really... You I were was stressed. Oh, I was stressing so much. You were much. cool, but you were stressed. Like, yeah. you were cool stress. <laughs> <laughs> um, big thank you to everybody who participated in this one. I, I wanted to make sure to, to give thanks to all of our previous guests. Matt Man, Shadow Wolf, Raven Main, Burnham, um, I threw the, the the rest of the group in here too. So thank you to Renara and Eldorino for last minute stuff. Ashley, thank you again. Did you guys hear who the villain was? Did you guys figure that out or did I modulate his voice way too much? No, I got it. Yeah. It was, I didn't get it, but it was prodigious it was obvious propofil. To, yeah, it was, it was obvious. To the, oh, that was okay. People. Yes. Yes. So Raven Main <laughs> rolled for seduction on Gloop Dob, and next time we'll see if it worked out or not. Um, also, big shout out to Burnham, who's got that awesome, you know, <laughs> voice in there. My gosh. Uh, but yeah, welcome, everybody. So here we are. Hello. Here we be. Here we be. Um, I think you got shot. <laughs> oh, no, I hate. I, <laughs> that was so I figured good. I would use that first before somebody else used it against me. So it's there. It's done. You guys don't have to use it again. And yes, that was my first ever. Um audition in ccc i was terrible i was living in a can and yeah i had the uh acting capabilities of a rock at that point so yeah um it's elephant in the room comedic belief <laughs> uh renara was not feeling well today so she's gonna go ahead and take the night off we we hope that renara feels better soon um normally i would check in with her side first but let's go ahead and move over down a bit pashley how are you how what? is how is <laughs> nice <laughs> for those of you watching on video she just totally smacked her mic I love how this podcast is going I know, so far it's... today. Oh my gosh. <laughs> These are the moments, little These... little kernels of cameo yes. goodness. You yeah. can bet I'll use that next time I introduce you. Please. <laughs> <laughs> if you know anything about me, it's embarrass me if and whenever possible. Yes. Um, so I had kind of a, a challenging week because I have a brain that is prone to wandering, as you all know, and I was tasked with uh, fetching emails off a website, putting them onto a spreadsheet, exporting them from said spreadsheet into an email marketing software, and then programming that email marketing software to send out emails. And it was, um, it took me a lot longer than I expected. I was very overwhelmed. And my brain was basically like, I was dead to the world yesterday. I'm like, I don't want to think about anything. Um, Yes, exactly, CJ. <laughs> but I'm good, and I, I base we watched TV all day yesterday, and I slept most of the day. Nice, yesterday, actually. So it was, but made it, and my brain now has more wrinkles, and um, yeah, that that was basically databasing boot camp. Yeah, I mentioned I know you when we we talked when I asked you about that, and, and I'm real sorry to hear that you had to go through all of that. Uh, but mm -hmm. welcome, glad that you're here. I know you weren't feeling well earlier, so again, thank you so much. No, thank you guys for having me. Yeah, yeah. Dorino, how is your side of the world doing? Uh, it's been interesting. Um, so this week I tried to task myself with 
uh, be more consistent with my auditioning. Mm. Uh, I told myself every day this week, I would do at least one audition, you know, something that I would, I would submit, not necessarily just record. That didn't happen. But, <laughs> um, I got like five or six done on Monday. Mm-hmm. So I kind of did it still. <laughs> um, uh, and then I did some more yesterday, including a, a singing uh, bit that you'll probably end up hearing later. Mm-hmm. Um, so as far as auditioning goes, um, it was fairly successful. Um, I was pretty happy with what I had recorded. Um, a few of them uh, were for games, which I'm excited for. And mm-hmm. there was actually um, there was uh one that i emailed to somebody it's for it's for a game that has the same type of gameplay as uh the original fear game and oh, if okay. anyone's mm-hmm. ever played that uh the the combat style is very reminiscent to uh john Wu uh kung fu flicks where it's you know guns going off everywhere like bits of wall and objects exploding it's a ton of stuff going on at the same time but playing it in that setting makes it feel very action-packed so the game is very reminiscent to that um so uh they were just looking for like a small part it's like the guy who's like talking in your ear in between waves of enemies it says you know like you're getting ambushed you know head to wherever um so i auditioned for that um i sent it over to him and he was like i really like it Um, Your voice sounds very badass. Um, And also, thank you for, like, sending along your demo reel, uh, because we're also using this opportunity to scout for people. Uh, So we will definitely let you know if there's anything that we could use you for in the future. So getting that feedback, you know, uh, on the edition Mm -hmm. is not something I'm accustomed to. Usually, you know, you send it and then you don't hear anything back at all. Um, So getting that back really helped um, inspire me a bit more. Um, which I was very thankful for because like for the past few weeks, I've just kind of been in a rut. Uh, so yeah, it really helped out a lot. Um, yeah. So uh, aside from auditioning uh, this week has been pretty much like any other one um, gaming happened. Mm-hmm. I played a game called GTFO with your boy Zamudi. Yes. Was oh, a great bro. time. I cannot wait to play that more because it's really <laughs> intense. Um Last night, me and my uh, girlfriend went to a casino. Um, she did very well. Um, we we had decided before going that we would limit ourselves to $150 each. Um, she, uh, on her first 100, uh, was just playing slots, went all, almost up to 400. Wow. Um, and then ended up cashing out at about 200. So still came out ahead, which is great. I, on the other hand lost pretty much everything in my first 100 on slots and then i used my last 50 on blackjack didn't pay attention to the buy-in at the table which was a minimum of 25 dollars bets uh and blew it in three hands so wow uh, learned my lesson there uh <laughs> so um no but i mean you know it, it was whatever it was uh covid money so well there you um, go yeah yeah. So uh otherwise, yeah. Oh, and today we made uh really amazing tacos with carnitas, which is my favorite meat like of all time. Um, I am I'm jealous. Oh, it was so good, Zamudi. I really mm. wish I could share it with you because like I grew up with Mexican food, so I know how it's prepared and whatnot, and it it reminded me of home. It was very um, authentic. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Shit, so, yes, yeah, carnitas that's, is really that's the highlights. Yeah. Mm. Yes, uh, carnitas is the best. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I've had a busy week. I'm adjusting to a new schedule. I'm actually waking up at four in the morning to get to work at 645 and make sure to open the office. Um, the nice thing about it is that I get home at 345. I've been able to start working out a little bit more, so I'm feeling a lot better. Um, nice. Yeah. I did a little bit of voice acting. Actually, one of my, one of my auditions that you're going to hear is a commercial reel. I want feedback on it because when it comes to the commercial stuff, it doesn't seem to be happening as often as I'd like. And maybe you guys can... And I understand because most of us are character actors, um, but when it comes to Voices.com stuff, it's mostly just the commercial stuff. Um, other than that, I, I the interview that I was going to do from the video game that I did, the the visual novel one, hasn't happened yet. Stuff gets re you know rescheduled. 
hoping to hear soon from them. If not, no big deal. I did see my name in the credits for the game for the first time. My real actual name is up there, and it's super nice to see that in a video game, which is apparently oh, coming yeah. out on, like, PS5 and all this other stuff, too. So it's going to be very interesting. Um, cool. Yeah. So I've been a busy week, and, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm still adjusting. And, and, you know, I slept in this weekend. And I feel a lot better. So here we are. So very this is cool. I am... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I, I was just going to say, I am very excited to hear your uh, commercial reel because um, that's my next, uh, or the next thing on my to-do list is to create a commercial demo reel mm -hmm. um, for the fact that I have had access to Backstage.com for quite some time, uh, probably over six months now. Um, and, you know, once the once the end of the year happens or the end of my year subscription, I, I get bumped up to the $150 a year. Mm. Um, and I haven't used it at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. I've I have submitted uh, applications for a few things, but um, I, I noticed that a lot of stuff on there is either commercial related or student film related. And neither of those things um, I can submit my character real for. Right. Um, so I'm excited to hear what you have put in there so that I can kind of reference that um, for my own reel, mm -hmm. um, as well as be able to provide feedback based on what I have ideas for to put in my own. Perfect. Love it. Love it. Love it. Well, and, and that's a great way of, of talking about today's topic because today we're going to talk about branding and then advertisement. So um, can I just tell you that I was in, it's like the the stars aligned because um, I was in a marketing and, and branding meeting on Friday mm -hmm. <laughs> for my stream. Yeah. And that's kind of something I'm, I'm hoping to guide my, my nonprofit in. So it was just interesting that the topic came up and I was in this meeting with a marketing yeah. and branding expert. So mm -hmm. absolutely. Well, we knew that you had experience in it before, so we figured now would be a, a good time to talk about it. And, and Renara brought it up last last podcast um, that she generally goes to a fa particular person on Facebook. And unfortunately, uh, we're not going to be able to hear too much. Hopefully next week we can. That she promotes mm -hmm. her projects through Facebook there. And maybe you might know something in regards to this particular uh, topic, Ashley. But um, we will get to the advertising. I want to talk about branding first because I think because we've, we've talked about the importance of your image when it comes to when you're doing first impressions and everything else. Um, Three of us here have been Twitch streamers. Two of them are current active Twitch streamers. Um, and I, I generally, I mean, as you guys, uh, the, those of you that are watching, I have a particular brand when it comes to personifying myself as AKA a wizard or Gandalf or something to that effect. Um, I'd love to hear your guys' comments when it comes to, to how that can help. I, Cause I've got some ideas already, but let's hear your side mm -hmm. of it. <laughs> um the beard yes my wife hates the beard <laughs> um i i was trying to uh figure out how i should phrase this um do you mean in regards to your brand as a whole or just it within a specific medium in general so the the, the importance of the brand in my because it's here's here's where i want to go with this mm -hmm. well, there's a lot of people out there that particularly have usernames that they came up with when they were 12, 13, 14, right. 15. And when it comes to a lot of stuff that you're doing on CCC or that you're putting out in Twitter, your brand is important because if you keep the name that you have from, you know, 10, 15 years ago, you're not going to get anywhere. And, and unfortunately, it's the game that you have to play. Right. So when it comes to branding itself, if you're still, you know, giant cock 669, it, it, <laughs> This is good timing for for uh, Dorino to take a swing. <laughs> that was my favorite name when I was 11 years old. All right. <laughs> nobody. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Ms. Ms. Yeah. The, nobody's gonna take you seriously when you're trying to put yourself out there. So that's what I mean about branding. And and we see a lot of this coming up right now when it comes to Twitter, where tweets that are from famous people that are from five years back are getting them in trouble now. Um, right. So these are the things that you have to be mindful if you're trying to build a career that's going to be out uh, in, in the public eye, uh, because those things can haunt you, bite you in the butt. And especially right now with the way that people want to gravitate towards negativity and then cause a cancellation or something to that effect, it's just something you have to be mindful of. Right. Well, especially um, within the past year or so as well, um, there because of uh, people having to quarantine and whatnot and not being able to socialize physically, 
um the attention um or everyone's attention has mostly been focused on uh, different medias include or mainly the internet or and or social media um so um as far as like the way i think about it and take this with a grain of salt because i don't use my social media very often mm -hmm. um i i plan on uh, utilizing it more as far as like promoting my business goes um in, in the near future but um you do, you want to you want to think like three steps ahead before you do anything you know because even saying something like um I, I it's really hard for me to think of something to say because because this could may could bite you in the butt later absolutely yeah, yeah exactly um so yeah i guess in general you just you just want to be mindful of what you're putting out there especially when it comes to opinions you know mm -hmm. like a lot of people these days don't understand that an opinion is an opinion and it's just your own mindset and that you can still be friends or you can still get along just because you have differing opinions a lot of people these days that are now thinking well if you don't agree with me you're obviously my enemy um so you know, until that goes away if it ever does um definitely be mindful of what you're putting out there um personally i stay away from anything religious or anything political mm -hmm. uh because i know those are very 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 hot topics um <laughs> so uh yeah as far as your brand goes though zamudia i mean like i don't imagine that you'll use the whole like wizard image forever no you know like no. it's from what i see it's more of just like a and an entertainment thing, you know, you, you got a long beard that you grew, throw a hat on top of it. You look like a, you know, B-side Gandalf. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, like it's it, it's just meant to, you know, drive entertainment, which is re exactly. entirely respectable. Mm -hmm. Like I don't personally have like a, a character to my image. I have the characters in my voice work, but I don't like I don't don a persona necessarily. Whereas, you know, you have like a an entertaining thing to look at. I don't really know where I'm going with this. I'm you're fine. Just, you're fine. You're you know, fine. This is, I, I love what you're doing. Let me tell oh. you the water messiah. <laughs> I, I, you may have particularly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a thing, isn't it? That is a thing. It, You've been it, called it, out I tried, on your bullshit. <laughs> I tried to kill it off when uh, Twitch Sings, you know, got buried six feet under, but it's going to come back to haunt me. Yeah, those, those, those dun, duets dun, are dun. out there. And Indeed and it's been brought up a, a couple of times here, but that I mean that's that's what I mean when it comes it's it's more being mindful of your of your image I guess is is where I'm trying to go with it. I'm sure Pashley in in your line of business especially you you you've seen um, things that come back and bite people in the butt. I'm not saying bring one out or anything to that effect, but I mean even even like the yeah, conversation I mean, everybody knows about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everybody knows about like you know what's her face uh, of of Mandalorian. Um, she oh, said yes. something pretty objectionable and nobody is too famous to be fired. Um, and you are not immune. You are immune from government prosecution, perhaps, but you are not immune from your employers, the consequences from your employers. So. Right. Ugh. Yeah. Always get, I, off, get off that high horse. <laughs> yeah. I mean, everybody, yes, you have the right to say whatever you want, but you don't have the right to, to be shielded from the repercussions of your, of your statement. So. Right. True. <laughs> So let, let's move on into the actual advertisement side. So as, as particular voice actors, your product is you. Your product is your voice, and that's why your image is very important. But how do you get to the point where you can start actively putting yourself out there and, and, and being able to, to have people come to you and try to get businesses? I've already started on some of that. I'd love to hear ideas on, on how you all think that you can move forward. I think, um, and I'm really glad that we get to talk about that because, um, well, I can probably bring this up. Um, I think it's important to focus on um, everything that you've done so far. It, if you're looking to kind of promote your brand in voice acting, take everything that you've done in voice acting and look at what you're like, what you're good at and what you're really, really good at. Mm -hmm. um, for oh, my roll out of bed skill 
right? You can just roll out of bed at two in the morning. Exactly. Yeah. Or you can, you know, you could do such and such in your sleep. Um, personally for me, um, if you all have hung around Zamudi's stream for like the past week or so, you have probably heard the new stream Raiders announcements that he has, um, yes. most of which were voiced by myself and they all have a very angry, gravelly uh, tone to them. Um, that's something that I've specialized for quite some time. And it's something that sets me apart from other people. Um, so it's important to focus on the things that you're really good at. Um, like I said, for myself, that is what I enjoy doing and what I feel like is going to be my best uh, opportunity. Um, and then to help uh, drive that, you take that one niche thing and you try to expand on it. Um, for myself, and I was planning on announcing this next podcast, but I guess I'll do it ahead of time. Nice. Um, I'm going to ex be expanding my own uh, voice acting career by um, allowing people to either purchase pre-made uh, Stream Raiders announcements or uh, like just stream sound bites, whatever that may encompass. Um, as well as being able to order custom ones uh, based on either a select amount of voices that I can do or something that they want specific. Um, so that was just an idea that I had mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago. Um, and I really think that as long as I can get out there and promote it enough, um, I feel like that could be a, a halfway decent venture. And not only that, but it'll help me get my foot in the door as far as making connections with people. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that will just continue to span out and, you know, grow myself or my business as a whole. Interesting. Yeah, that's it. No, no, that's good. <laughs> Any thoughts on that, Pash, at all? I think, I think it's much... The, the, the key to social media, Twitch, any of this is to kind of guide people into your service. So whether it be voice lessons or like you want to have an independent product as mm. Twitch Things has taught us, you can't depend upon the platforms to make the money for you, but you can, the platforms can be leveraged to guide, to funnel back to what you're doing. Right. And so <clears throat> an easy way for, for Dorino to, to, you know, a start something kind of unique and my, my, you know, you, you're trying to do what nobody else is doing. What is proprietary to you, mm -hmm. you know? And this is one thing that he's doing. And you have a ton of friends here. You know what right. I mean? So, the, you know, working the network and, and doing something that nobody else is doing within your network is, right. is a great way to start. So, And, and as Burnham just brought up, um, it, it's, it, it's a good idea or a good practice to do because um, especially, especially in like the Twitch community or the voice acting community, a lot of things spread by word of mouth. It's not necessarily people going out there finding you know, posters saying, hey, off or such and such service. It's, hey, I came across this guy the other day and he does this certain thing. If you're looking, if you're ever looking to get into that or something you want to invest in, that out, you know, um, Twitch things, especially, you know, like I went into people's streams and uh, actually, no, there was that one time that, um, we were uh, i joined your twitch things party with kelly siren never at least from my what i recall sung with her before mm -hmm. and yeah. as soon as i joined she was like oh is that that water guy <laughs> and I, was like, I remember that. Well, yeah, look at that you know like mm -hmm. it's yeah just me putting myself out there and granted it was a lot of repetition to say hey this is the water Miss messiah reminding you to drink your water um it, it spread you know, like people know who I was right. just because I had a tiny little gimmick that I could easily say within five seconds and people thought it was entertaining enough to share with their friends mm -hmm. or at least just talk about it in general. Mm -hmm. no, yeah, Absolutely. That, yeah, and that's that's a great way of doing it. Now, the other way that, that you could is, is have you considered opening, because I, I have a Fiverr account, have you considered opening Fiverr and throwing that, that in there what, too? No, so, yeah. yeah, and that's... um. That's what I was planning on doing. Um, I want to continue looking for alternatives. Okay. Um, I don't recall where I heard it, but I heard that there are some um, pretty distinct drawbacks to using Fiverr. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I don't recall what they are. I just remember hearing like someone saying, you know, 
Fiverr screwed me over, you know, and mm-hmm. here's why you shouldn't use it. And I don't know what that is, but I want to find or I want to see if I can find that again. And then I want to look for alternatives to uh, using that as a service. Um, there's Upwork as well as Fiverr. Mm-hmm. Upwork is more of a, I, you know, they post the job and you do the offer, not the other way around. So, um, mm-hmm. that's also another place. Um, but when it comes, I, it might've been me. I know Fiverr for the most part, you have to be very careful because there's a lot of scammers on there. You have to be very mindful of it. It took me sure. like six months to get my first gig off of it. So if you're going to do this, I would say open it now and get past yeah. that initial period. And then you can start getting the, the job work after that. The one thing right. I haven't done really is advertise that I have a fiber. We've, we've talked about Teeny Giant before who is, does so well on Fiverr because she, she lists it as content for her stream. And I, I'm, I'm sure people want their stuff to be recorded live as well. So it's a very good right. concept. Um, and, mm. and I always applaud and her for it. She's a genius it. with mm-hmm. marketing stuff. She's yeah. an absolute genius. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah, and, and I I do have an account created. I haven't posted anything on it yet. It was just mostly to open it up and see what is available because, you know, I didn't have a whole lot of experience or did any research on it. I like to kind of just jump into it, at least get an account created, mm-hmm. see what they have to offer, see what the negatives are. Um, so I do have the account up. Um, I just need to see if it's worth using or not. And then also, like I said, look for alternatives, see if there's any other um, websites that offer the same thing, but may have different benefits, something that's just going to fit what I do. Um, the whole the whole expansion is just going to take me um, a lot of careful planning because mm-hmm. I have a bunch of other ideas that I want to incorporate with that, <laughs> such as starting to stream again. <gasps> oh, no even though I said I would never give Amazon any more money. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, there, there's a bunch of things that I want to hopefully utilize, uh, including like my social media, maybe opening some new accounts, utilizing accounts that I have open that I just never use, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. So it's going to be, it's going to be a huge jump into the pool and hoping I can tread the waves. Yes. You're quite all right, Bash. You're, drinking. It, we're allowed to drink when we're podcasting. This is I'm not gonna like mute who, who you or wants anything. To have some water drinking ASMR. Yeah, yeah here we go. Any? All right, all right. Take a water break. Guys. All right. Everybody, everybody thank everybody take a water break. Everybody who's who's listening in the podcast or in chat, thank you so much. <laughs> um <laughs> So, I mean, the, like I said, the, the, the biggest, I mean, the other thing that you can do is once you have your demo reel is, is, is what everybody else does. They put it out on Twitter. They put it out on YouTube. You just need to figure out how to, how to differ, differentiate yourself from those that are already there. Um, be careful how you but you have to, you also have to do a little, this is where the SEO comes in. Mm-hmm. It's Twitter's more forgiving about this. Um, Discoverability on TikTok is also way, way more forgivable because unlike Twitch, TikTok is subject relevance pushing. You mm-hmm. know, it's not like Twitch, uh, this person has 15,000 viewers, therefore they're the top of the list and they, they're they seen, right? right. So um, you got to leverage the platforms and, and where they're pushing algorithms like, you know, Instagram Reels also you know, it's a minute, it's basically Instagram's answer to TikTok. Right. And so, you know, if you put like, let's say you do a video reel of all things, like of, of your different voices. I don't know if that's the thing in the voice acting world, you know, but it's, it's another, it's another discoverability thing, mm-hmm. but yeah. the hashtagging all, you have to know the audience. You have to, you can't just hashtag voice actor, right? Cause that's going to go into like, I mean, you do it, but in then the you say like, with everybody else. Orc. Right. Like work voice acting, or for me, opera talk, instead of Ooh. just singers of TikTok, opera talk, you know what I mean? So you, it takes a little bit of exploration, knowing your audience and knowing wh- what's going to work and get you pushed. Right. I like where so. you're going with this. Because so, because there is, there's a science to to hashtags and to what topics you're doing within, because within, TikTok, I've done a couple of videos where we, you know, you and I, we did the, the voice actors <laughs> challenge. <laughs> yeah. 
I've okay, done and, one. And the bullshit between the, the oh, two yeah, of us. Oh, yeah, the like... constant. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I've done one where I've done a voicemail for somebody. If, if they record it, they can, like, fill in their name, and they've got the goofy voice to go with it. Um, that's a great way. That's a great way of putting yourself out there and getting yourself. No, I am I'm way too old, be luddy for TikTok. Uh, I, that's that's I, something I've always said. Um, but it's I like that idea. I like to be able. Maybe we can expand more on it. Um, and yes, we all are. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I'm watching chat for those of you that are are listening to us. Um, and again, if you want to be with us, uh, we're gonna start next week. And I'm gonna say this now at noon. Pacific standard to record in order to give our friend from the other side of the world a little bit more time before bed. <laughs> so she's not mm. rushing to bed afterwards. Um, but yeah, something to consider is, is maybe cause either I've seen other voice actors on there. There's a gentleman, I'm trying to remember his name who does a lot of the NFL stuff, but he reviews food funny oh. as hell. Like he'll mm. look at the chicken nuggets for like different places and he'll rate them all one through 10 um, so I, I like that idea. It, it's, it's, and I'll, while I'm still looking up, I'm going to see if I can find his name so I can give him a plug. He's, he seems like a great guy. Um, nice. any, any other ideas for those of those people that are out there? I love, I love oh. the concept of being able to use those hashtags. That's great. Yeah. Knowing, yeah. knowing audience, knowing audience. Right. And, and I think what would probably help, um, if you plan on starting in that field as well is um, before you start uploading your own products, go to this website and start searching around, you know, see what has the biggest communities like, um, for instance, uh, several years ago, uh, when YouTube started, I started making short films while in high school. Um, and around that time, that's when uh, like one of the OG channels, Smosh, uh, started climbing the ladder. Um, I basically looked at like what tags they used in their videos and then copied most of them, to be honest, because sure. a lot of a lot of their videos had a very similar audience to like what we were trying to appeal to. Granted, we weren't looking to use it as a business. Um, we were just, you know, fair to be more helpful pe for people who want to watch, you know, like skit videos comedy videos etc cetera, etc cetera. um mm -hmm. so yeah the, I, th I think the best advice i can give for that is just simply go on the site and search search it in certain keywords you want to look up you know uh, orc voice acting put in orc voice acting or i don't know deflated footballs because tom mm -hmm. brady tried to steal the super bowl and the election <clears throat> Wow, um, we're going there, huh? <laughs> but I'm not just making a point. Like you can, you can get very, you can get very general with it. You can very get very specific with it. So it's all up to just experimentation. Yeah, yeah. I love the idea. Yeah, yeah looking up what and it's this goes with El Dorino's one famous quote to me is like, if you see somebody that's doing something right, steal it, mm -hmm. because that it's it'll work out for you too. So I love that. Well, and it's, you also have to, um, like, I, I guess, you know, in the early days of YouTube, the tagging was, was the way to go. But um, in, a, a friend of the community, um, his name is Loki Doki GG, oh, and he yeah. has something mm -hmm. like 50,000 subscribers. And I had talked, I had like an hour long conversation with him about a year ago about this very thing. And I've been very uh, not active on YouTube, I guess I'll say <laughs> YouTube in progress. But he was saying that your first line of description and your titling is very very important to the algorithm now and not even the hashtagging the hashtagging is is all but gone wow okay uh, for discoverability yeah and and the um and the algorithms push the length of views and not necessarily view count to combat like view botting and stuff like that um so it, it's 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 a constantly updating process like to 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 keep up with everything you know um but that was just very, very interesting. Yeah, and it's it's good to know those particular trends, especially if you're trying to to go somewhere in these in the social media. Social media in itself is just it's such a broad topic, and things unfortunately change super often too. It makes it mm -hmm. hard to keep up, especially if somebody was running their career in that particular fashion. Uh, um, yeah, I can see that that's going to be a little difficult. By the way, I heard I heard you you mention it earlier when it comes to the voice. Don't forget that if you do want to do any type of uh, voice coaching. Miss Princess Pashley has 
uh, Patreon available, I believe it is. I do. Yeah. I do. Uh, it's a little, it's a little difficult to keep up with, um, just to give in the state of like, I'm doing everything my job asks me to, because I'm like on trial right now, but, yeah. um, it's definitely something I feel very passionately about. And, um, I, I, like she being, it can go in any direction. She and I have gone like from, they've learned an aria, an Italian aria, and now she doing a lot on TikTok with mm -hmm. singing. So I'm like, mm -hmm. let's just review your TikTok stuff. And like, that's relevant. And, and my, my goal is to meet people where they are. Like, what are you doing and what can I help? you know, rather than try to present something that might not be helpful. Mm -hmm. So, cause not everybody's going to learn Arias <laughs> or, or have the desire to, but there's, Ooh, yeah. I think, I think singers like Pat Benatar and, and Freddie Mercury are really good examples of how, um, that background in classical training can really, really just make the, the, the singing experience better, even in rock and roll, you know? Yeah. So very true. There we go. So in general, I think we can come out and say, learn in order to advertise yourself, learn how social media works, try to learn your best practices, put stuff out there. And, and in all honesty, still audition, 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 because the contacts that you make for those people that actually hire you or that pick you up for their project may come back again like it's happening for El Dorino. They kind of put mm -hmm. you in the back pocket in those files, and that's the way that you're going to get additional business. So. Well, it's yep. relationship building too, because you're making a sale, right? You mm -hmm. and and you never like I was talking to my my job about this, like, you know, we're cold emailing people. I'm like, it's gonna take a little while to build the trust. Right. You right. know, especially if you're going in cold. So um and it kind of all it all files back to like rejection and dealing with, you know, being good enough and et cetera, et cetera. You have to think of every opportunity as like you're building a, a relationship. Um, in order to make that because there's like a whole customer funnel. That was the other thing we were talking about with, um, with the marketing expert. Um, because my, my buddy, my buddy, my, my job is handling the Facebook boosting mm -hmm. and I have some thoughts about it because like, I think in order for that stuff to really be effective, you have to be in a, in a certain price range of boosting. And we're talking like our budget is $50 a month for that. Wow. I digress, but there's, there's, there is a certain model, like you, just because you're getting more views doesn't mean you're going to make more sales, you know? Right. So and, and it's, it's all very tricky and interesting. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's absolutely interesting. And it's like I said, it's super important for somebody who's trying to, because that's one way of getting exposure. Exposure is important. And hopefully it's, it's positive exposure. And if you're watching your, your brand and making sure that it's clean, um, that's when, when things can start happening and people start reaching out. But yeah, mm -hmm. I think great information. Thank you, everybody. Um, we're going to get to some auditions here because this is what we do. Uh, we would love to hear your auditions much more than us talking. If you have one that you want us to check out, coldreadthepodcast at gmail.com. Or if you have any questions or any particular topics that you'd like for us to cover or question for any individuals on the show, please email them coldreadthepodcast at gmail.com. Let's begin with Renara since she's not here, shall we? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Renara sent us two. Um, so the first one, let me see what it was called. Oh, let's just play it. Here we go. Three, two, one. Let me tell you something now, Terrace. Once and for all. Under no circumstances, under no reversal of fortune, shall the Dereni clan of Belfera ever join the Dominion or swear fealty to the Thalmor. Am I clear? I'm afraid that's a complex question with a long and complex answer, which I don't have the time to properly service with my response. It's a tower, the first of its kind which helps to reinforce the very stability of our world. The scholars and resources in the archives can tell you more. All right, that's the end of the first one. So this is apparently for the Odyssey of the Dragon. Um, seems to be very, hmm. very fantasy based. From what I'm hearing, um, is that another uh, Elder Scrolls mod? Do you know? You know, they did. They mentioned a race that I that recognize from um, Elder Scrolls. I have. Well, I mean, it's Odyssey of the Dragonborn, so I'm assuming that's a yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Probably. Mm -hmm. So, um, I very clean as usual. Ren definitely has that um, old, older type of a voice set for this particular one. Very strong too. I I liked it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't 
surprisingly do not have any critiques for this one. I thought it was actually pretty. <laughs> oh, it's right in her lane. Right yeah, in yeah. her lane. One hundred percent. Um, this is another character in that particular one. So let's listen to this. It would seem to be a fleeting glimpse at something greater hidden within. But I assure you, it only seems that way. With but a little effort, one can peel back the veil of concealment that guards the truth within. Be ever so careful, however, as a bold misstep can bring about calamity to that which you seek to uncover. Take care lest the veil collapse upon it, and the secret is revealed. Dragonborn! Thank Azura! You, you must do something about these Daedra! I'm no warrior, and it's all I can do to put these fires out before they damage the archives. The others are protecting the Elder Scroll, so please, do something! Okay. Hmm. Again, the bre I'm always appreciative of breath acting. Um, <clears throat> use your breath as best as you can while you're trying to do the lines. Um, I would have liked a little bit more franticness if it was, you know, it's stuff that's burning down, it's stuff that's super valuable to them. That would be my critique. Hmm. Yeah, it's um, interesting because I don't know what the director or what the notes were. Um, like, are we looking for a British accent? And if is there a dialect? Is you know, because there were some words that were, I had to think about it before. You know what I mean? Like she said, "Do." But it was, I can't, I can't replicate exactly. No, what you're she fine. Did. Yeah, but um, yeah, it was. Some of it became un unclear to me. As sometimes, like when you're hearing a different dialect of the English language, it, you're like, eh, what? <laughs> That's all depend. Like I said, I have no idea what the directions were. Right. Yeah. You know? uh, uh, I mean. Yeah, and something maybe we can consider in the future is actually putting up the post of of what they were looking for. Um, mm. Yeah. So. Uh, but the, I, I, it became a little bit like with the breath acting, like there was franticness, but then I lost a bit of the words too. So maybe that was like like a perfect storm of everything. Mm -hmm. um, but she she's fantastic. She is fantastic, one hundred percent. Fantastic. I thought the second one actually was really really well done. Um, I definitely got the especially with the the breathing, and there was one certain word in there I don't remember which, but. Um, she she ran out of breath at the end of that. Um, I think that that little nuance really set it apart. Um, so I thought that one was actually really, really good. Um, the first line, though, um, I feel like just a teensy bit slower, I think, would have helped add some weight to the words, mm. uh, especially at the end, like take care not to whatever she had said there. Um, I felt like it was a little rushed. I feel like, you know, just slowing it down a little bit would have helped add some more weight to it and would have really brought it out a bit more. I think there's really good advice. The, the best advice someone ever told me was like, especially if you're live and in the throes of it, if you need to take a breath, just fucking take it because mm -hmm. you, if the audience doesn't really perceive that you've taken a breath because breathing is a natural thing, but they will notice if you run out of breath, if there's a struggle there, if you in the context of music, if you fall flat because you don't have enough breath, if you yeah. don't complete your phrase, et cetera, et cetera, that stuff carries further. So I don't For know. Sure. Do you guys I do a lot that. of like breath planning when you're considering these? Like, do you, do you mark that in the script? Like what's, what's your story with that? I, I do personally. Um, the way, the way I record my lines is um, I, I read the line out normally without recording it. Um, by just doing it naturally as to, as to how I want it done. Um, and then I will mentally notate where I'm taking breaths at. And then mm -hmm. when I record it, I actually put a longer pause in there than I would need to just to help with the editing process later. Cause I usually tend to remove a lot of unnecessary breaths. That way I can get more, more in my tank um, mm -hmm. and be able to deliver the line a lot better than just, you know, like a quick breath and then spew it out. Mm -hmm. That's just me personally, though. That the that sound editing completely like, changes it, right? Well, and it, a lot of it comes from um, like music production as well. You know, like right. I know how to fill up my my lungs real fast uh, just from singing and screaming and stuff like that. But um, <laughs> but uh, doing it, uh, music is a different animal than voice exactly. acting is. 
like voice acting you have to be very very precise with what someone else wants as opposed to music where it's more about what you think sounds good what you want right. um so therefore like i can get a i can get away with a lot more in music writing than i can in in voice acting it depends on what you're doing i've been doing a lot of choral recordings and i have to do oh, this sure. Mm, right to keep the <laughs> beat going to, or to just because to that, that's how she lines up the videos oh gotcha to do this but i digress so i've been doing <laughs> no i love that that's good good to know and you can just go back and like edit it like i've gone back like where i haven't reached a high note and i'm like i'm just gonna take a take of this high note where i'm not in the throes of it <laughs> it's kind of like anti-choral singing all together but like i want to give her a good product <laughs> mm -hmm. right so i don't know it's just interesting to think about. Yeah. Um, I'm going to play my commercial one. And like I said, I'm very curious to hear what you, what your guys' comments is going to be. I'm trying to remember what the product was. I'm sure you'll hear it as we go. Apologies if I'm not allowed to. Um, play it anyway. Here we go. Well, let's face it. Planning for disruption is the new business as usual. And the businesses that will thrive are the ones taking an integrated approach to getting the most value from weather data. Leading companies are employing advanced analytics and intelligent workflows to better predict how weather will impact their assets, employees, and customers. Industries you might not expect are quickly pivoting from blaming the weather to harnessing it. That's it for that. Let me go back real quick before before you guys critique me, because I saw there was two particular comments in chat regarding the last one. Um, where is it? I know it was Raven Man who said one. Uh, Franticness. Based on the read, I got the sense that the character is in some variety of caster concentrating on the variety of spells that could put out fires in a, and running dangerously low on mana. They'd be too tired to be extra frantic and probably slur a little. Love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, please. No, that's a great thought. Yeah, yeah. So um, so as far as the flow of everything goes, um, I feel like the words and the tone themselves were good. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like there was breaks when breaks were needed. Um, the only thing I would have to say is, um, when if you decide to go back over it. Um, try to fill up a little bit more on air um, so that you're not you're not breathing in the middle of sentences. Um, like when I see commas in a sentence, especially when it comes to commercial ones, um, I almost tend to ignore those or I'll put a very brief pause in there, but I don't breathe. I usually try and fill up on as much as I can and say, blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. You know, it. I, I think there's just there's just a couple of spots in which you could hear that that tiny little breath in there, and I think either just removing that or just filling up on a little bit of extra air really would help string that along, and okay. it would sound a little bit more fluid. Love it. Thank you. Yeah, Ash. That's all I got. Any notes? No. Well, I was muted. Sorry. I I thought it was fantastic. I I'm reiterating what Olderino said. So the the biggest thing when it and, and for the most part I try not to defend when it comes to to these because I'll take I'll I love your input thank you so much um, I don't edit out the breaths myself because I know there's usually somebody mm. else in the back end that tends to do that I don't want to mm. advertise something that I'm not going to be able to do in the finished product when it comes to to what you can what you can do oh my wife is chiming in love this I'd say Ooh. watch your vowels for instance two is coming out as tuh fair enough. My wife. I have that same problem, and that's, actually. <laughs> and that all depends, you know, on emotion. You know, I had an interesting conversation with Shoshipi about this with one of their songs, mm -hmm. um, because there's there's like a vowel choice that can be made, right? Mm -hmm. And so one one makes for better singing a pie in particular. Um, so it just depends. Okay. It depends. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, if you're more emotional, you're probably going to be yelling, and when you're yelling, you're more prone to using those open vowels, you know? Right. So that's, that is very subjective. Love it. Well, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say too, it, it is very subjective. For instance, um, I, I auditioned a line yesterday where 
the end, the last line says, um, come over here and introduce yourself to the inn's newest hire, comma, would you? Um, so I recorded it both ways that I think it could be done. I would say, I would say, would you? And I'll also say, would you instead? Just because like, I feel like even in more of a classical speaking, like would you is never really heard as often anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and so I figured maybe in case they were looking as kind of like just a roll off the tongue as opposed to more of a formal way of stating and I just would record it as that instead. But no, like I have the same problem. I when I instead of saying I went to the or I went to the store, I would say I went to the store. You yeah, know? like yeah. it's it's just part of the speech. Sure. And the interesting. And it, no, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say it depends on also the goal. Like if you're if you're doing a New England accent, you know, they, they, <laughs> there's certain pronunciations that go out the window. Like we lose all the R's in New England. <laughs> <laughs> Pack the cat. There's like the Smart Pack commercial in the Super Bowl. <laughs> and that, what's very distinct about that is not a voice acting gig, but this is just stating a point. Like it's on brand for what they were trying to accomplish. So mm, check check with the director on that. Yeah, and the, right. inter the interesting thing when it comes to the postings on Voices.com is you don't get very much. It just kind of like there's mm. these categories that fill in, and one of them has been like real life conversation. So it's like it, they don't want the hi, come on in, you know, type of, of, of announcer. They want a regular Joe that'll just pretty much sound like, you know, the person next to you. Um, yeah. So something to consider mm -hmm. as well. Um, Why couple... am I playing a Titan? Yeah, <laughs> Pashley. Sorry. Um, like how you say Jaguar or nuclear, am I right? Says Meg Morta. Um, Mom too says, right. as far as commercial work goes, I would think enunciation is a key. Absolutely. 100%. They do this a lot with when, when it comes to that. Um, mm -hmm. there are, I am an expert authority ads out there and I am your buddy. ads. <laughs> yeah. Very true. Yeah. Sure. Some, some of them are meant to be more of a presentation. Others are meant to be more very casual. So it all depends on what the director is looking for. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Or, or if you're smart packing. Or you're smart, smart pack. packing. Yeah. Smart pack. Smart pack. <laughs> okay. Um, let's do Dorino singing one next. I believe this was the Montgomery Gator one. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. Preface this or anything? Are you good? No. Here we go. My whooping teeth in a bear. These sharpened claws are meant to tear. Pest hope you know how to hide. From here on out, you're trapped inside. Nowhere to hide. You're trapped, you're trapped inside. And there's nowhere to hide. At least none I can find. Mm. Okay, so... <laughs> uh, someone uh had the they had the drums and the guitar and everything recorded already they just wanted somebody with a more of a growly rocker type voice that mm -hmm. fits the character um they had the lyrics uh they had a version of them singing the chorus i uh asked them right from the get-go do you want an exact copy of this or do i have some creative freedom here they said uh Creativity is entirely welcome. So I rewrote the chorus, at least the singing part. And as you can see, I threw in some screams because mm -hmm. that's what I do. I heard that, yeah. Um, <laughs> and mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, so that's what it came out as. It's another, it's a it's a Five Nights at Freddy's thing, but it, I don't know, it, it is a paid gig. So I was like, screw it, why not? Well, not just that. I mean, some of them are fun. It gives you a little more, right. uh, yeah, to play with. Um, right, well, I, I, I just saw that they wanted a, a growly rocker voice. And I was like, that's me. I liked it. I, Ashley, I don't know what, what... I liked it, and I have no no authority to comment on anybody's scream singing, so... <laughs> How close were you to the original? I'm curious. Um, the original... Uh, I don't know if the guy is a singer or mm. not, or who even did the singing portion of it. Um, so I, I... I don't know. It, it was... The screams weren't in the original one. Right, right, right. Um, the screams are great, that. by the way. I love um, the screams. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, that's, the, a, that's a selling point for Dorino. As right, right, right. To... That's your niche. That's your niche. Right. Um, the, the, the melody of the, the vocals was almost entirely different. I rewrote that myself just by plugging some stuff into a MIDI, listening to it a bunch to memorize it, and then mm -hmm. recorded it. So, um, and then the last part was like mostly ad-libbed. 
um it wasn't there was no melody there it was just kind of like uh um kind of like how i do uh like be prepared you know there are parts that are actually sung in the original version but i mostly just kind of like yell through them as opposed to singing them right. so do you, do you guys know the trivia do you, do you know the the big secret about that song that it's jeremy not irons. actually jeremy irons i think it was so jeremy irons does about three quarters of it and then jim cummings of all people winnie oh, the winnie pooh, the pooh. Has, oh. then finishes it. well because he was already in the movie as one of the hyenas like the the, the non-verbal one mm -hmm. but he's like because <laughs> 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 he's so fucking amazing he leaves an impression because he's jim cummings <laughs> it was just amazing to me like no i wouldn't have known that if i hadn't read that somewhere true yeah so might as well be but yeah, Jeremy Irons' uh -huh. voice, like he it gave out in the middle of recording it. He just he just couldn't handle like the long lines of singing at uh, the end of the song. Why? Right. Sure. So. Yeah, I I loved it. Did you get any feedback from them yet, or did you already submit it? Uh, all they have said so far is thank you for your audition. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, well, that's the standard. No, that's a... So uh, if you guys ever like loop back with them and 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 like if do you ever because like you know when you're applying for a job they're like oh send a thank you note or say mm -hmm. check back in a week later or something like that is that is that like considered eh? i don't do i it. generally don't yeah, yeah. Okay. because you, you never know uh when or how long it takes someone to uh make a decision and mm -hmm. therefore i feel like if you try to step in the middle of that decision making you might hurt your chances mm -hmm. hmm. or you seem overly needy um because uh, yeah. They're they're always super busy when it comes to because I'm I, I I just heard back from as I mentioned last week I got the the role for both villain and protagonist no idea what's going to happen I haven't heard anything since for a video game that I did back in November or I auditioned right. for back in November so there's sometimes that you just don't know little when it's Jekyll come and Hyde over here huh? I know right this, uh, I have no idea how this is going to work <laughs> this is, there's no there is a precedence for this <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah very cool I so hopefully you get it hopefully you'll hear something more. Um, Hopefully, <laughs> burn him again. I've got Bull Man. That's what's coming up. Okay, so I want to say um, there is that one. There is uh, Maxwell. There is Maxwell, and then the the middle one is called Whiny Kid. Yes. Um, you can choose to play that one if you want to. I almost want to say don't do it because it will probably drive down your viewership. <laughs> um, because I <laughs> I was asked to do like that whiny 13 year old that you hear on Xbox Live complaining about everything. So you can play it if you want to. I don't really care. Actually, but I kind of think that we need that to play it now. I think you kind of do. I, kinda, I think I kind of kind of. A do. lot of thought went into it. I just want to say. Oh. That. <laughs> The intro like that. Let's well, I mean, you've already sold it to me, so here we go. Everybody, um, earphone warnings if you're wearing earphones, sorry in advance. Three, two, one. <laughs> yeah, you like that? Oh, come on. Are you freaking kidding me? He actually shot me in the air? This guy has to be literally hacking. <sighs> oh, come on, dude. Uh, he did it again. I'm gonna write this fricker a message. I know you are hacking. My dad works for Grand Theft Auto Inc. and will literally get you banned. <laughs> See what he thinks of that. He messaged me back. Oh my gosh, seriously, bro? Don't talk about my mom that way. Ah! Come on. Come on. Ah! Stop! That's not fair! Stop RDMing me! I actually hate this game! Stupid freaking hackers everywhere! Oh my god! Why will these idiot admins stop this guy? He's literally ruining my KD! Heck this. I'm just gonna call him out on voice chat. Hey, guy who keeps RDMing me? You better stop right now. Yeah, I'm old enough to play this game. I'm 14. So you better watch out before... What? 
I'm banned? <laughs> Mom! <laughs> okay. Who wrote the script? Did you come up with it, or...? The entire thing was, yeah, written. It was ad lib. Performed by me. Well, yeah, the performance, <laughs> but, yes. Like I said, a lot of thought went into it. I knew what they were looking for. And right. then I was like, what's every trope that I could associate to a 13 year old being online? So I overused the words literally, actually, uh, seriously, uh, like bro, mm -hmm. hack, you know, like everything i could possibly think of to but within like you know a time frame so i i thought i was great i mean it, it's always hard especially for those of us that have a lower register to play a younger person um yes. i the, the script was great i thought i think that you would i mean maybe pitch it up a little bit would have been great if if you get the part i mean for the most part they want to see the raw one if you get yeah. it gosh i i hope i hope you do because that, that was great i loved it well the guy has submitted it to us. He said it was definitely one of his favorites so far, um, but he has to present it to the, the people that he's working with right. as well. So, yeah. So one out of, you know, five dentists likes it so far. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Pashley, is, is you have a teenager, I believe. I know I do, too. Yes, I, it was I very... want to know what your opinion year old. is, Pash. There were shades <laughs> of that. There were definitely shades of what I hear my kid, he doesn't really rage out on games anymore. He rages out on stupid people. So in a lot of ways, he reminds me of Dorino, like just in, when, if Dorino was 12, that's who my kid is. Like, nice. Oh, okay. Why are you being so dumb? But like Dorino obviously doesn't rage at people. Mm. But I could imagine that frustration of dealing with like- You haven't seen me play Crucible in Destiny. <laughs> no, there's, I avoid Crucible in Destiny for that reason. <laughs> um, but no, it was but like, it's, he's actually hacking is what I've heard come out of my kid's mouth, like with yeah. uh, TF2 in particular. Yeah, but. not sure. Well, I, I, I heard a lot of yeah. what my young my youngest daughter, in case you guys haven't heard on stream, she is a rager for sure. I, so I heard a lot of that in there. So for sure. Good job. Good job. Hopefully you cool. get that part too. Um, let's do one more. So let's do either Bullman or Maxwell. What would you rather have? I'm just, uh, Maxwell. Could I interrupt? To, to, I drank like 32 ounces of water and my bladder is going to punish me sure I, i'll be right back hang on <laughs> you know i we need we need like elevator music time here. me time me <laughs> oh my god uh let's fill in what we got <laughs> yeah. i so, mean that this one is about a minute long i think so hopefully it'll be enough time uh which which one do we choose bullman or maxwell, the maxwell, maxwell. one the, okay. the bullman is uh very reminiscent to a lot of other ones i've done so this this one is different than uh any other audition Gotcha, gotcha. Um, again, I'll take this opportunity while Pashley's away to say if you want us to listen to one of your auditions, we we provide constructive criticism. We are not going to say that you're terrible, you're trash, or anything to that effect. Um, Cole, read the podcast at gmail.com. Um, if you have a specific question, we have a good network of people that are willing to help you out. Uh, we will chime in as best as we can. Um, we are here to help. And, and again, we're not experts. We're doing this just because talking about it helps us all uh, advance a little bit more. Networking Definitely. is absolutely important. <laughs> well, Ashley's not back yet. <laughs> <laughs> Editor, which is me, go ahead and find some elevator music, maybe some from, from somewhere. We'll throw, fill it in here. 11 hours later. <laughs> all right, here we go. Keep hail and clear. Pardon me, may I get the link for Stream Raiders? Absolutely. Exclamation SR Jesse James. Sorry for those of you that are. Uh, uh, oop, there you go. Uh, we're going to listen to Maxwell. Here we go. Oh, that's right. All right. I'll be right back. Hurry, hurry, hurry. One time only. This show will knock your socks off, boys and girls. Feast your eyes on the amazing Twister Sisters as they twist their bodies upon the trapeze and then twist the bones out of another sorry sucker. Such a performance doesn't come every day, my friends. So hurry, 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 and come see it now before it disappears forever. Look, sweetheart, I'm in this for the entertainment, not the pay. You think I can see a guy get bludgeoned to death via a corndog stick anywhere else? Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. So you were going for, obviously, the carnival caller, hurry, yeah. hurry, hurry type? Mm -hmm. Uh, 
I liked it. I've heard I've heard different variations of it. This one seemed to be a little bit more nasally. I don't know if that's what they were looking for in the character. Um, generally, didn't specify. those individuals tend to bellow out a lot more. So mm-hmm. I would have liked. I would have personally would have loved to have heard more power behind the voice. Hmm. Okay. Um, I will say that the uh, reference that I was using personally was um, if anybody has watched uh, The Legend of Korra, um, there is an announcer for this uh, type of sport in the series called Pro Bending, um, and he sounds like a classic um, like uh, radio announcer almost, okay. um, where he's like, fire flakes, the number one product of pro bending or whatever. So kind so of what I was going along the lines of, um, except I wanted to have it a little bit higher and more excited. That's the transatlantic accent, I think is what they call it. Oh, yeah. 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 Patrick, you were going to say something? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> All right. I, well, I was going to say like um, those guys also use their voices effectively. And I think the more you can work in your face, and in your mm. nose, the squealo here, the, the more your voice will project. So I don't hate it mm-hmm. sure. from that standpoint. I, but... I'm not used to using, like, my head voice. I'm not used to using anything out of my nose. So it's it was different for me, but I wanted to give it a shot because it was outside of my comfort zone. Um, and so I just figured I would throw it in, in the ring and, good. you know, see what you guys thought of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it, it again. It's probably going to be a different direction than most everybody else takes. So I I think it's always good. I always like to try to be the standout one. So um, right. hopefully it'll work out well. So with that, um, with all the auditions that we're going to listen to, um, let's figure out who's going to do the intro for next week. Any mm. takers, or shall we roll dice inside the Discord? I believe it is Pashley's turn, if I recall correctly. We can look it up. I mean, I'd hate to throw I'd hate to throw Renar under the bus because she's not here, Um, unless that's the exact reasons why we should hand it off to to Renar. But okay, we'll discuss this one offline. I don't want to put anybody in the spotlight as we're trying to uh, (laughs) to call this off. So thank you for that. Next week, I will be getting my second vaccine dose. uh, The day before the podcast so i'm hopefully i will be here if not i will hand over hosting duties uh to elderino uh you've done this before for me and i appreciate it um sure. to take lead uh we'll host the channel and everything else here um if you have again a, 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 a an audition for us to listen to or if, you know, a topic that you want us to talk about over read the podcast at gmail.com please follow princess pashley elderino renora hawk in all of the social media now, if you have any social media questions, we can ask Ashley, too. We know that. Um, <laughs> so we've learned a lot today. Branding is is important. Make sure you watch what you're putting out there, especially if that's the image that you want to portray out in the future. Advertisements is good. Uh, please, please use your social media responsibly in a good way and to help you advance. And we'll figure out what we're going to talk about next week. Hell yeah. Heck yeah. Oh, what's that? <laughs> Fire and brimstone, by the way. Yes, welcome. Uh, fun fact, the UK is vaccinated 144,000 people yesterday. Yesterday. Holy oh, cow. my God. Wow. Yikes. Uh, do racehorses pee any more than any other types of horses? I don't know. <laughs> Anybody know the answer to that one? I don't. <laughs> probably because they have, they probably go through a lot more strenuous activity and therefore need to hydrate more. Um, Water Messiah uh, knowledge. There you go. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. This has been so much fun. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening on YouTube or anywhere you can get your podcasts. Uh, we will be back hopefully next week with another fun topic to discuss. Until then, keep those auditions going. Keep those tapes rolling. And we will all see you all next time. Bye. Bye.